I'm gonna be honest. I have no idea what I just watched. I came into Halloween Ends with absolutely no expectations. I low-key forgot this movie was even coming out. Yet somehow, some way, I still ended up disappointed. And I mean, it's definitely not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's just... I'm not feeling it. So if we think about this timeline of Halloween movies, we have the original Halloween, which is of course a classic, then Halloween 2018, which I think serves as a good sequel and is pretty much Michael Myers versus Laurie Strode round two. Then Halloween Kills, which is a pretty fun time, but mid as f and essentially Michael Myers playing on easy difficulty for an hour and 46 minutes. And then we have this movie, which is barely a Halloween movie. We've got this new character who accidentally does something very bad, then ends up becoming like this fake ass Peter Parker from Spider-Man 3 type of character. He falls in love after like two days, then becomes completely psychotic. And it's just like, wow, that was quite a turn. And then Michael and Laurie fight for like two minutes at the end. It's messy, very messy. There's a little pet Look at him. Now you see my main issue with the last movie, Halloween Kills, is that Laurie is pretty much in the background for the entire runtime. Like she pretty much does nothing in that movie. But there was some entertainment value because you at least had Michael Myers racking up ridiculous kills. In Halloween Ends, Laurie has more to do, but she's still kind of a side character. And even worse, Michael Myers is barely in this movie, which I honestly don't understand. I thought Michael was a god in Halloween Kills. And in this one, I was just like, Michael, where's your heart at? Where did the dog go? They got you looking like a cuck right now. Now from the trailers, it was made very clear that this movie would include some kind of final showdown between Laurie and Michael. And it's like the writers knew they wanted to end with this, but had no idea how to get there. So in the fourth and final movie of the timeline, they add in a prominent new character, have some discussions about the nature of evil and trauma, and end up flopping when it comes to ending Laurie Strode's story in a satisfying way. So let's talk about Halloween Ends and how we got to this. Now, although I do not like this movie at all, I actually think it starts off in a pretty good way. It's Halloween 2019 and this guy Corey is babysitting this little kid. Then all of a sudden the little kid disappears and we get a bunch of horror movie signs that point to the house being infiltrated by Michael Myers. The door is open, the kid's screaming for help, a knife disappears, you get the idea. But it turns out the kid was just playing around like a little dick and locks Corey in the attic. So Corey is like, bro, let me out. And the kid is like, haha, fuck off. Then Corey kicks the door down, which hits the kid and makes him fall from the top floor and die. What was that? And suddenly, my interest was piqued. Because yo, they really just off the kid like that. But unfortunately, it kinda all goes downhill after this. It's all downhill from here. So after this opening sequence, I of course assumed that Corey would be a part of the story in some way. What I didn't expect was that he would be one of, if not the main character in the movie, which is a pretty big risk because he's a new character that's being introduced this late in the game. And I'm gonna guess that a lot of people's problems with this movie come from this character. But not only is most of the movie centered around Corey, we also don't see Michael Myers until like 40 minutes in. 40 minutes. I almost forgot that this was the last movie in the timeline. This shit didn't even feel like a Halloween movie. Lori is writing a memoir and trying to move on from her trauma, but she just doesn't feel important. Which is crazy because she's the main character in the franchise. The drop off in her character since Halloween 2018 is insane. Her biggest contribution in the first half of this movie is that she sets up Corey with her granddaughter Allison, who I only remember from one scene in the last movie. So after accidentally killing that kid, Corey is now an outcast and down terrible. In fact, it's so bad that this man is like 24 years old getting bullied by kids in the high school band. And this is one aspect of the movie that I really don't understand. Like I'm pretty sure this movie takes place in 2022, but these bullies were pulled straight out of a 90s movie, which makes it even more hilarious that these are band kids. Look at how fucked this guy looks. So pretty much they get pissed at Corey because he won't buy them beer. You're that psycho babysitter. He killed that kid, didn't he? Yep. Killed a kid and too pussy to buy some fucking you know beer. What is happening right now? And where do band kids act like this? A little fucking pedo creep. So where's your next victim? And how was he able to grip the chocolate milk that tightly? So Lori randomly sees Corey getting bullied and decides to intervene. She then takes him to the hospital that Allison works at, intentionally trying to set them up. And it actually works because Allison almost immediately falls in love with Corey. And honestly, this relationship as a whole just feels rushed as hell. Oh, a motorcycle. Teach me to ride it. What do you mean by that? 
They go to a Halloween party, dance awkwardly, and get in a fight after Cory gets pissed when the mom of the kid he accidentally killed sees him and freaks out at the party. Stop! Talk Why'd to me! Why'd you take me in there? It's why I don't go out! What? <laughs> These two literally just met like a day ago. So Cory storms off and while he's walking home, he gets pulled up on by the psychotic band kids because apparently they weren't done beating his ass. I can't get over how ridiculous this is. This dude is just casually carrying a single drumstick in case you forgot they were in the band. Then they just throw Cory off a bridge because I guess they just don't care about potentially murdering somebody. They're in the high school band, bro. Or in the fucking marching band. <laughs> but anyways, this is when the movie starts to really get ridiculous. Because after getting thrown off a bridge, Corey gets dragged down to the trenches by Michael Myers, where he's been living since the last movie, which is when we finally get our first look at Michael. So Michael starts choking Corey, just gripping that neck tight as hell, and then strangely decides not to kill him after looking into his eyes. And based on things that Laurie says later in the movie, I'm gonna assume that Michael decides not to kill Corey for one of two reasons. Either Michael sees his eyes in Corey and thinks of them as being similar. Michael's eyes in Corey. Or he sees some sort of evil in Corey and wants to make him his little personal intern and pass on the torch. The other kind of evil lives inside us, like a sickness. It's more dangerous because we may not know we're infected. Either way, it's weird because since when does this dude pay that much attention to people he kills? And why would he care whether or not Corey is evil? Also, how is he able to just look into Corey's eyes and know that he's evil? I feel like he just looks like a person that's scared to die. Anyways, after this encounter, Corey is clearly different. Apparently his evil nature has been awakened because he immediately kills an old homeless man in self-defense and doesn't really seem to care that much. Then he goes and apologizes to Allison, tells her that he killed someone, and she doesn't really seem to care either. I killed someone. So you're just not gonna ask any follow-up questions to that statement? I get that maybe she thought he was talking about the little kid, but still. This relationship is so stupid. I swear a lot of Halloween Ends is just a romance movie with Michael Myers in it. But the romance is bad. These two pretty much bond over both of their lives being fucked up. Just burn it all to the ground. I like the match. Bro, just leave. Then we fast forward a bit, and the two are at a diner when Allison's crusty ex-boyfriend comes over and starts being a dickhead. Corey spazzes at him, which makes this dude follow them home, but Corey realizes this, so after he drops Allison off, he leads the ex-boyfriend right to the trenches where Michael is, and the two team up and kill him. They really gave Michael Myers a Robin. What is his tag team shit? Also, Michael in this movie is so disappointing. He's pretty old, but you definitely couldn't tell in the last movie. But there's points in this movie where he just looks old as shit. Like in this scene, dude was looking decrepit. But then I guess he kills the ex-boyfriend and gets his groove back. Why did he nut after the kill like that? Then Michael and Corey go out on a little mission to kill Allison's dickhead boss and his girlfriend. You know, team bonding stuff. And at this point, Corey is full on psychotic bully McGuire. And just like Robin, he's not trying to be in anybody's shadow. So on Halloween, he pulls up to the trenches to see Michael and snatches his mask. They really got one of the greatest slashers of all time out here getting bitched like this. The man that is damn near indestructible just got wrestled down by a dude that got his ass beat by band kids. And he got his mask took. That's crazy. And at this point, it seems like the movie is setting Corey up to be the next Michael Myers. Because we finally get to Halloween, and Corey puts on the Michael Myers fit and goes on a killing spree. First, the band kids. He leads them out to the spot where he works, and uh, he goes crazy. The leader of the band squad gets a shotgun from Corey's dad, who happens to be at the shop late, but when he tries to shoot Corey, the dad gets in the way. How did he hit a headshot from that far out? He's in the high school band. No offense to my band people, but come on, bro. Oh, and the leader ends up getting his face torched. Stacy's dead. You did too. I mean, you're not wrong, <laughs> but you didn't have to say it. Then he goes for his mom. I mean, his mom was pretty crazy, but that's wild. Then this radio host, I guess because he spread misinformation about him on his radio show and kind of talk shit to him. Yeah, I don't know but he smashes his head in and then cuts off his tongue. That is disgusting. Lastly, he goes for Lori. Pretty much because Lori could see that he was becoming psychotic, so she tried to keep Allison from seeing him. And he didn't like that, so he is resulting to murder. But of course, Lori was ready for him. Bitch! <laughs> so Lori is like, hey, you and Allison are gonna make a great couple. Psych! You're never gonna be with her, bro. And Corey is like, shit, if I can't have her, no one can. 
and offs himself with the knife right as Allison walks in the house so she'll think that Lori killed him. So Allison gets super distraught and leaves. I don't know where she planned on going. Then Michael comes looking for his mask and kills Corey. So yeah, he's actually not the next Michael Myers. This doesn't make any sense. Why would you just kill him after he was the main character of the movie? What was the point of giving him such a big role? Now, I personally don't think Corey should have as big of a role as he does because he's a brand new character. But if you're gonna dedicate so much of this movie to him, why would you not let him take on the Michael Myers persona? I get that they're using the character to talk about trauma and evil and trying to give an overarching theme to these set of movies, but I don't care about all that. I just wanted to see Michael vs. Laurie, which we get, it's just in the last 15 minutes of the movie, the part that's actually a Halloween movie. Michael Myers trying to put Laurie's hand in the garbage disposal is the highlight of this film. That shit is diabolical. So we get a pretty decent fight and Laurie ends up slicing Michael enough to where he presumably dies from blood loss. But of course you can't trust this man to be dead, so they destroy his body. Movie over. Halloween Ends is not very good. This movie is an hour and 50 minutes, but only feels like a real Halloween movie for like 20 minutes. Honestly, I think they would have been better off cutting 30 minutes out of the movie and just making it similar to Halloween 2018. That way you could at least satisfy more people and send Lori off in a better way. But look, at the end of the day, it's a Halloween movie dropping in October, so it's probably gonna make a good amount of money, no matter how mid it is. But let me know what you think about this movie down in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll catch you on the next one.